to everybody who's been liking the videos so far. We thank y'all. You guys liking the videos, it's kind of helped us start to grow the channel even more. So we appreciate it. To those who have not, please, we ask you, hit the like button before you even watch this video. It helps us grow the channel, helps people learn about us, and, and allows us to make more great content like this. So that's all we got. Thank you for helping us grow this channel. Hit the like button right now, and uh, on with the show. Good morning. <laughs> what up? What is good, my brother? What is good? You know, chilling, living life. I know that's right. And beautiful. As a gangster supposed to, you know? Oh, um, you're, you're doing G shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. We're here, folks. Super duty tough work. Bright and early. Early morning edition. Heard. Back to these. And, uh, you know, missed last week. Yeah. But brothers were sleeping, resting, doing other things. Mm hmm. But we never gone for long. Right. You know, the mission continues, the saga continues. With the most infamous podcast on planet Earth. Super. Right. Duty. Tough. Work. Brought to you by your boy, Printnificence. The logic over there. You know? And yourself for supporting this podcast the way you do. And so uh, you know, this week, we just gonna jump right in. This is a topic that I think many of our listeners will relate to. And it's a topic of this week's discussion is why? Is it so tough to make it in music? Why? Um, and this, this, this list of things we're going to talk about has nothing to do with talent. Nothing really to do with talent. It's something that I thought about as I've been getting deeper into my driving career, you know, mm -hmm. driving this truck. I'm like over two months in. And I see things in the trucking that I'm like, damn, I wish they had that over there. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't we have that in music? Why, 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 why would it set up like that? And so it made me start asking myself, man, this is, these little things are probably why making it in music is so difficult. Now, disclaimer, you know, Elijah and I have both quote unquote made it in music. We both mm -hmm. got to the point where music was our sole source of income. You know, Logic did it for several years. He was full-time artist before I was. And I concluded 20 years of it, shit, just a couple months ago when I took this job. That's the first time in 20 years that I've done anything other than music. Um, and had it not been for this damn worldwide uh, shutdown and pandemic, I don't even know if I would have made that decision then. I probably would have tried to stick it out a little longer, but... You know, here we are, and uh, I've noticed some things about the music industry um, as I'm working now. I'm like, man, we need those. And I think for many of you who have aspirations of becoming full-time artists, maybe this discussion will kind of open your eyes as to some of the reasons why it might be tougher for you. And as you hear us discuss these things, it might give you some ideas for ways to resolve these situations to get around them, find solutions for these, these things we're going to bring up. And so, uh, all that said, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Word. We got you stuck off the realness, the most infamous you heard of us. Official podcast murderers, the show comes equipped with few points to share. Grown man ideas for all those who care and want to grow. So go ahead and download every single week with a brand new episode. You're not alone in this world, cousin. So we share information and honest discussion and keep repping a culture like we supposed to. They spread gossip, but they never come close to. I can hear it inside their tone. They talk about the industry but never left their home you get laced up with bullet points and such plus empowering topics that they never would touch you can put your whole network against the team but super duty tough works the mvp most valuable podcast on mp3 priceless info but all of it's free huh. so take these words home and think them through 
Super duty tough work is coming at you. You are now listening to Super Duty Tough Work with your host, Blueprint. Raw and uncut. Adult conversations. No shucking, no jiving, and no bullshit. Right. All right, folks, we're back. Super Duty Tough Work blueprint the logic today we're talking about why making it in the music industry is so hard now this whole topic has been in my head for a few weeks now and it was sparked by a conversation i had with a more experienced driver before i even decided to get my cdl and i didn't understand it until i got my cdl and my guy jb said to me he said al Everything in trucking is set up for you to win. And I was like, all right, I didn't really know what he meant. This is before I went to, to trucking school. He's like, you ain't going to get it now. He said, when you get into it, you're going to see they want you to win in trucking. And I was like, and he's like, he goes on and says, look, man, he said, look at, look at trucking. You got this driver shortage. You got companies who uh struggle to keep people you know because people have there's so many jobs and so many opportunities guys can just bounce around at will um he said and so when people actually get you into the 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 funnel they don't want you coming out of that joint Mm -hmm. they don't want you coming out they want to keep you they want to retain a talent they don't want to be you know uh shorthanded He said, but he said, but at every level, trucking is set up for you to win. And I was like, yeah, let's see. You know, coming from the music industry. It's kind of we don't really say that over here. Because it's not true. (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. It's not. So, you know, I was a bit skeptical, a bit skeptical. Okay, let me see what this thing talking about. I've been, this is my third month driving solo. And I got to say, everything he said is fucking true. The second week of school, I noticed that it was different. And so, you know, we're going to touch on some of these things in here, but it's like, when you see it, it becomes so clear. Like this is, a lot of this is why it's so hard for guys and even the talented to have successful music careers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the number one thing that I'm going to, point out as to why it's so difficult to make it in the music industry is that there's no apprenticeships Mm. now that isn't to say that artists don't help each other you know uh the main one of the main reasons i was able to have careers and we all were able to kind of have careers in music is because experienced artists taught us you know like i went out with slug and atmosphere and rhyme sayers touring and they had a model where they took their newer artists on tour with the more experienced artists, right? So you learned everything on the job training. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like being an apprentice. You were in a training program to become a touring artist. What I learned, I took back, me and you and Prism started doing it. You started mm-hmm. going out with your own DJs doing it. We exchanged stuff. You went out with idea and abilities. All of us learned, and when we and when you took out artists, you taught them what you knew. Mm-hmm. It was somewhat of an apprentice program, right? But to be honest, that's the exception in the music industry. Facts. You don't see major label major label artists taking younger artists on tour with them every time. You don't see uh, Jay Z. Did he never had an obligation? There was a period where the rock was tight, and he would take they would do Rockefeller tours, right? Right. But there'd be many other times he would tour, and he wouldn't bring one of them acts on with him. You know, you look at some. There's other independent labels. They didn't have a model where their largest flagship act had to bring the the newer acts out with them to get them exposure to their fan base. Right. It's not the norm for older artists to take younger artists under the wing and keep them under fold until they're good enough 
successful enough to go on their own and do it. And then they keep and they do the same thing for somebody else. That's not the model in the music industry. Right. That's the model in trucking in the trades. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so difficult to make it in music. You're largely on your own to figure shit out. Right. When we were figuring out shit with Waitlist, we would always talk about, man, we were some of these older artists would help us. Mm -hmm. How come these oldest artists, they fucking hating on us? How come they not taking us to the side, sharing jewels or, you know what I'm saying? Or taking us under wing. We figured out everything we knew about how to be, how to sell music, how to market music, how to play and book shows, promote shows, how to run a website. We learned it on the job. Yeah. We got the website. Then we figured out how to make a website. Mm -hmm. You know, we installed the e-commerce software. Then we figured out on the fly how to make it work. No one told us this shit. We didn't know what a door deal was till we started trying to book our own shows. We didn't know what it was. Well, you know? Go ahead. Well, in the de in defense of the cats here in Columbus, we was the first ones doing a lot of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't have anybody to really turn to and ask questions to. Yeah. You know, like we were the, one of the first groups ever doing shows outside of Columbus, you know, outside of Ohio, you know, having a website, having actually selling merchandise. Yeah. Like we were some of the first to ever do that. So, you know, in their defense, there was nobody really for us to turn to. And that's true. <laughs> and yeah. that, you know, nobody really to take us under wing yeah. and say, you know, this and that, you know? Yeah. Cause it was largely un uncharted territory. Yeah. But when you look at some of these older fields, or older trades from electric to HVAC to fucking carpentry, plumbing, mm -hmm. although even uh, tr truck driving in there is an older trade, you know? Mm hmm. They have a system in place where you like you got to train until you're ready. Yeah. You know, like I trained for three weeks. I could have trained for six weeks. It was all dependent on how I did when I got in that truck. Could I drive at night? Could, how was I doing in city driving? How's my turns? How's my backing? How's my, you know what I'm saying? Like all these things that you got to learn about driving. I was not allowed to get my own truck and go out on my own until I proved and was evaluated on those things. We don't really have that. And uh, because we don't, newer artists, I think, spend more time doing things that don't quite matter as much as, th as they could be doing you know, high impact things, you know? Yeah. I think it's, it's real interesting these days because, you know, back in the day there was somewhat of an apprenticeship program. It wasn't even a program, but cause everybody couldn't afford equipment back then. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Everybody didn't have a means to make beats. Everybody didn't have means to record. So one of the reasons now that is so different. And I think cats make it difficult because they won't ask for help. Because yeah. they think they can do it on their own because all they got to do is download FL Studio or, you know, Ableton on their computer or GarageBand even. And, yeah. you know, you can start making beats today if you've never done it before, you know. And YouTube is, you know, YouTube University is like their school and they don't really ask for help because they don't think they need it. But it mm -hmm. is important to have someone with that experience. You know, it's just like a doctor with a residency program. Yeah. Like, you're not, you don't get to just be a doctor on your own. You got to be a resident for like two years before you can even, yep. you know, get your own practice or any of that stuff. So, you know, it's very important, but I, I think, I think the fact that the um, technology now has made it so readily available for everybody to be able to become quote unquote an artist yeah. that, you know, people don't even ask for help, even though mm. it may be available. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I think that's part of the issue too. Yeah, it's true. You know, we were fortunate because, you know, we had the opportunity to be friends with the guys from Rhyme Sayers. So as Rhyme Sayers was coming up, we were coming up. And so mm -hmm. we were sitting there exchanging information, whether it was how do you, that's who I was learning from. Like I was mm -hmm. talking to Sadiq and we'd be dealing with distributors for our first time as they would already be having dealing with distributors a year or two ahead of us. Hey, what's right. this? How do you do this? How do you contact them. What do I send them? Oh, a one sheet. What's a, how, what's a one sheet look like? Okay. What do you put there? What should I put? How does, you know, like all of these things that you didn't understand. Okay. How do returns work? How to, 
you know, how do we, how do end caps work? What are these retail programs? These are things we all had to learn on the fly. And mm-hmm. no one, there was just no, nothing set up to just say, okay, here's the path. We're going to teach you these things. And when you get them, you'll be ready to go. Right. But we didn't have that. And I think that puts a lot of uh, aspiring musicians and artists at a disadvantage. That's number one. Number two thing that makes it difficult to have a career in the music industry is that music itself is not essential. I'm going to say that again. People like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know. Music is not essential. Ain't nobody uh, going to die if you don't put that single out. Nah, nah, bro. No <laughs> one's starving. It's not, you know. Life will go on if you if you stop putting out records. It yeah, will. Yeah. If the last two years didn't teach you anything about the music industry, it should have been that this shit is not essential. Mm-hmm. In the eyes of the whole world, your whole shit got shut down. No one gave a fuck. Yep. In fact, you was the first places to get shut down and the last places to open up. Yep. <laughs> what should that tell you about how people view the music industry they don't give a fuck it's there they enjoy it it's not Mm -hmm. they got shit to do yeah it's entertainment entertainment is not essential Uh, it's not food it's not you know what i'm saying bars bars and clubs was closed but grocery stores were still open like hello (laughs) it's not (laughs) it's not a necessity you know for some reason for some people yeah. You know, it's it's it it feels like a necessity, but if it's not there, you can still survive. You can still go on. Yeah. Life might not be as enjoyable. Yep. But life will go on. Hello. And, and and what does that mean for the average musician? It means that your job is made all the more difficult because people don't necessarily need what you have. Mm-hmm. You have to spend more time convincing people that they fucking need or want what you have to offer. And uh that's much more difficult than the motherfucker who says, hey, I'm going to just get my CDL. I got my C. I had a job before I got my CDL. What the fuck does that tell you? The day I signed up, I got accepted to trucking school. They were like, oh, you're pre-hired by Warner. How? I ain't even started school yet. Mm-hmm. If you want the offer at the end, assuming you get your CDL to end, the job is yours. This is the same for everybody in trucking and everybody in essential service. You ain't see mm-hmm. nurses out here starving. Right. Doctors starving. You ain't see uh you, you ain't seen no contractors. You ain't never seen a broke electrician. <laughs> right. Never right. seen a broke HVAC person. It ain't cause if it is, it's not because they don't make money. I mean, they may not know how to spend it or keep it, but they got money because this shit is essential. You're gonna always need certain things. You know? Uh, and, and in certain fields, certain people will always have an easier path to success because right. what they do is needed. Like, like you said, like we may think it's needed because we love it so much. Right. Some people need music like they need air. It's like, yo, if I don't hear listen to music, it, it fucks with your mental health. Some people, you know, I get it. But to the larger population. Music is not essential. And because it's not essential, everyone is kind of looking at you like, yeah, if you make it cool, if you don't, I, I, it doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. ain't nobody feeling that way when they fucking uh, groceries double in price, you know? <laughs> right, right. You when know? they need plumbing. Yeah. When that toilet <laughs> stopped up. <laughs> I bet you they be on the phone ASAP. Oh, hold on, man. My fucking toilet not working. Hey, can you get over here today? I need this now. Now, yeah. the, uh, hey, look, how much it costs me to come out? Whatever. Just come out. Fix my toilet. It's not like that. Um, it's not like that when you really look at uh, music. Mm-hmm. Music and art, is, it's, it's, we get excited about it, but it's not essential. Yeah. And so to, to all my artists out there, uh, it's something to keep in mind and it's something that you know I've noticed since I've been working because it's like man because you know drivers truck drivers are basically essential employees it's like the whole game is different mm-hmm. you know 
I know guys who have like uh, only been driving a year, have like two, three accidents. You know, have gotten in trouble for all kind of shit. Ain't got fired. Shit, shit, you would. It's the type of shit where in any other environment they'd have got fired on the first or second day. Mm. In trucking, it's like ah, give him another chance. <laughs> Can't afford to lose it. <laughs> right, right. Make him take some more training. We're gonna sign you up for some training. You know, because we just want to make sure you trained right. We're not gonna fire this man because we need this boy. You know, he's still he's still working effectively. You know, it's just not mm. worth it. That's not really what it's like out there for the majority of people. You know what I'm saying? Artists, artists are not, not even just artists, right? But the majority of people don't have jobs that it's very difficult to get fired from. Like you, right. get, you got to fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, like royally fuck up to get fired as a goddamn trucker. Like you have one bad release as an artist, you unemployed. <laughs> right, right. One bad release and like your next five years is <laughs> fucked. That's it. Oh, you know? remember when he used to beat it, man? Yeah, we. I don't, I don't know. We used to rock with him, man. This motherfucker done fell off. <laughs> or you, or I mean, just in the entertainment industry, you know, as a whole, you say the wrong thing. Yes, you your done. shit can be fucked. You can't. You're done. Canceled. You tweet the wrong thing. You're done. You're out of here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. That's it's so volatile, yeah. man. You can tweet the right thing at the wrong time and you're done. Right, right. <laughs> you didn't say nothing wrong. You just said at the wrong time. Yeah. It's a little too early on that take. <laughs> yeah. Wrong people were listening. Wrong people were listening. Six months from now, exactly what you said is going to be accepted across, you know what I'm saying, the yeah. whole world. It's not going to be no crazy shit. You was right, but you was at the wrong time, son. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wrap. It's a wrap, you son. You out of here, man. Essential workers ain't got to worry about that shit, man. They not worried about that, man. So, yeah, that's number two. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Word. This is your weekly reminder that we have two books that you, as a listener or watcher of this podcast, need to absolutely own. The first is... The 10 Traits of Successful Hip-Hop Artists. And the second is The Social Media Cheat Code. Both of these books were released within the last year. The 10 Traits of Successful Hip-Hop Artists is a book where I go through the stories and explain the traits that uh, are behind the success of some of the biggest names in hip-hop today. Um, The book has got nothing but amazing feedback. And if you are an artist, business person, whatever you do, if you would like to be inspired and would like to learn more about hip-hop, along the way and also see some some reinforcement of the concepts that we talk about on this podcast the 10 traits of successful hip-hop is for you second book is the social media cheat code that is for everyone who listens to this podcast who does not uh, consider themselves an expert or really good at social media it's not for super experienced people it's actually for people who are on social media but are not getting the results you need so what we did is i broke down like 12 or 13 strategies that I use all the time that actually work really well for me. I put it into book. I gave you examples and I tell you how to implement it. That's a book you absolutely need as a listener to this podcast, watcher this podcast. If you're on YouTube, supporting these books actually goes a long way towards supporting the podcast. So uh, to support the show, if you like what we do, obviously we don't necessarily get paid to do this shit. So support the products and services that we create. And these two books are a big part of that. We appreciate your support and uh, back to the show. All right, folks, we back super duty, tough work talking about why making it in the music industry is so difficult. We got two down. The next point we got point number three is that there is no definitive path to success. You see, before I even decided to get my CDL, I was looking, I'm seeing people like it's a path. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. you get your CDL, you get a job as a, you know, company driver, and then that's considered a success. But mm-hmm. you can save up, buy your own truck, become an owner operator, and make even more bread. That's a definitive path. When I was a computer programmer, oh, get your computer science degree. You know, there's jobs out here for you. 
You should have one of them probably before you graduate. You go work, you become junior analyst, analyst, senior analyst. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> project manager, you know, right. team leader. It's, it's, a, it's a hierarchy, right? You see it. Where that at in music? Nowhere. Because you can, you can blow today. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? You can have a, a viral moment and become the biggest thing spoken for the next two weeks. Yeah. Or nobody will ever know who you are. It's right. Like, <laughs> right. It's two sides of the same coin, yeah. though. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. You could be doing exact same thing as the next man. Exact though. same thing. They can exact blow up, thing. you cannot. Yeah. They they can have a pad like it like they can go from literally no fans to millions of fans almost overnight Mm -hmm. by having one thing that sticks or finding one thing that works that one thing that works for them ain't gonna work for you but everybody who goes through those steps in those other situations tends to end up in the same places it's it's like a ladder it's a hierarchy Mm -hmm. that you just climb up the more experienced you are the more likely you are to be successful yep music doesn't have the same dynamic of the more experienced you are, the more likely you are to be successful. Because as you pointed out, fools will come right out the streets, write their first rhyming song and blow up. Yeah. Have never the made game is a The game is a great example. Yes. Dude was rapping for less than a year before he got signed to Dre. It's and crazy. and sold millions of records. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, look Man. at fucking Cardi B. Where was Cardi? Yep. What, when was Cardi B doing music before? <laughs> she was a fucking reality show star. She was a stripper. Stripper. She wasn't yeah. writing raps. That was her. That was her job. She yeah. was a stripper and a reality show star. She wasn't because she was trying. She was yeah. trying. She wasn't performing at no local rap showcases. She yep. wasn't at the open mic. She wasn't recording and, and putting out demos and mixed. No, she went straight from that to a number one song. <laughs> <laughs> there's no definitive path for success in music what works for one person might not work for the next person you know someone could you could try something and you could fail at it the next person can do it and fucking have massive success with it yeah it leads to this thing where like because there's no path for success a lot of people are just trying to figure out things as they go you, and some will work to some degree, some will not. It's very difficult to put together a definitive plan because there's no definitive plan path to success. And what makes it even more complicated is that music is objective. Mm-hmm. Like what we like, who, who the fuck knows? Everyone's taste is just, it's their taste, you know? Yeah. It's not math. It's like, yeah, this song is dope. No, don't like that one. Right, same song. Same song. <laughs> oh, fuck, baby. Yo, this is the song of the year. Other people, yo, this song is the worst song I heard in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, and so a lot of times as an artist, you will be literally guessing, trying to find a path that works for you. Our path was kind of set, uh, like you said, we figured out a lot of things on the fly because in Columbus, no one was doing what we were doing. Mm-hmm. We were the, one of the first groups throwing our own headlining shows, booking clubs on our own doing our own street team stuff, not being booked by any promoters uh, in a city, uh, booking ourselves out of town. We had some mm-hmm. peers who were doing it, but they hadn't blown up, blown up, you know what I mean? Right. Doing it. And so we were just doing what we saw them doing mm-hmm. um, and doing it locally. And, uh, but there's nothing definitive about that. There's no guarantees that it was going to work. You know, right. we have peers who just like us did not have the same level of success that we had. And, mm-hmm. and so uh, that makes the music industry that much harder. That's number three. Number four reason why making it in music so difficult is that there is a higher standard of success in the music industry. Yeah. And by that, I mean. Overall, when people think about becoming a successful hip hop artist, 99% of the population is not thinking about guys like you and me. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) They're thinking about Eminem, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
Dre, Kanye, right. they, they go straight to the massive success. Yeah, you tell somebody you sold a thousand copies or something, they like, what is that? I don't understand. Not understanding that, you know, my yeah. margins yeah. got me living life out here. They'll be you like, know what I mean? They'll be like, that's it? Right. That's what they're uh, going to say. Damn, you only sold a thousand? Good try. Maybe next time, champ. <laughs> Stay at it. <laughs> right. That's not success to the average person. Right. But like you said, if you, if you make an $8 a record and you sell a thousand records, you make, <laughs> make some bread. <laughs> yeah. You make some bread. You know, way more than you would have made working that job right there to there. Right. You know, but to that, it, it's, it's wild though, because, because there is a higher standard of success for what's considered a successful musician, so many artists are not willing to settle for anything less than that highest level. Right. They're like, man, look, if I can't be that, I only want to try. Fuck, I want to be an underground artist for. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I want to be an independent artist for. If I'm not like these motherfuckers, I'm going to get a regular job. Mm -hmm. Or I ain't even going to rap no more. And uh, it just creates a weird thing because the, the, not only do the fans get it fucked up, but the artists and the industry gets it fucked up too. Yeah, definitely. So that's number four. Let's do number five. Number five. Oh, I just noticed I got these uh, numbered wrong. You probably caught it, but we actually have <laughs> yeah. one more bullet point than we should. Number five thing, reason why the music industry yeah, why it's so difficult to make it in the music industry is that there is no collective win. No collective win. This goes back to what I was saying about how trucking is set up for you to win. From the moment I got to trucking school, I looked at it like I look at everything else. I have to be the best. This is a test for me to see how I can do. And I remember my second, the end of my first week of class you know, is when I kind of started seeing things differently because there was this test, right? And I studied my ass off for this test. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that I knew it was, like, it was like everything that was like on our CDL test plus more stuff. And it was a multiple choice test and we knew we was going to take it, you know, that afternoon. And I was like, okay, yeah, I think I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to be prepared for this. You know, so we get to class and uh, it's like, 10 of us in this class and the teacher's like, Hey, um, are y'all ready to take this test? Some guys like, dang, you know, everybody. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to take this. Cause I've been studying. Then she's like, all right, uh, pull up the test on your, on your, on your, uh, computer. So we pull up the test, go to the first thing. And then we proceed to take the test as a class meaning okay question number one da, 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 da. here's a question what's the answer guys <laughs> I, th I think it's c a no it's d all the above uh, it's actually a okay write down a <laughs> okay question number two what is that da, 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 da. uh b yep that's right okay everybody Put B down. <laughs> Talk. A hundred questions. We just sat there and took the whole test together. Mm. All the, and everyone got a hundred percent. That's dope. <laughs> the first two questions, here's what's funny. I got mad. Cause I was like, yo, I'm not even going to know whether I got this shit right or not. <laughs> I was pissed. Cause I was like, not used to that shit. But well, here's the thing. Like, the trucking schools decided that like, yo, for this test right here, and this wasn't like my CDL test. This was just like trucking school tests. You know, mm -hmm. this is one of the tests. We took many tests like this where they decided that it was better to have everybody know the answers. Right. And move forward. than it was to have a couple individuals in there, get a hundred. Somebody flunk it, have to take it again. The whole class got to wait. 
and then they ain't ready to go out and work on the trucks when it's time. And then because they sitting here taking this test for five hours. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I was like, what the fuck is this? But they cared. <laughs> they, it was a collective win. Right. They're set up for you to win. The music industry don't work like that. Hell no. <laughs> Dog, this is what's funny. The first test we took, we had this thing called a pre-trip exam where you got to go through the thing and name all these parts and name their function and state their condition. You know, my alternator is belt driven. It's got three electric holes. It's not cracked for eight of You know what I mean? Like you got to go through all this shit. It has no more than three quarters of an inch of play on this belt. And it's, you got to memorize this shit. It's like 300 fucking points of shit you got to do. And you got to get it. You got to pass it. You know, you get like 20 minutes to do it. So you got to. It's for some people, it's the hardest part of school. There's so much about this shit that's fucking hilarious. So this dude, my, my dude, uh, Anandil, you know, our, my Haitian brother, he was having problems with the, with the language barrier. Mm. And so everybody else was starting to catch it. You know, we nervous for the day for the test. That morning we come in, we do it. No one has it, you know, the, the morning before. We had it that day. Okay, cool. Next day, everybody's taking a test. I go first. You know, I get a 97. Now, no one is my guy, Anandio. He went like fifth or six. This man got the lowest score ever. Mm. He got like a 12% or some shit like that. He comes back over there. No, he don't even come back over there. She's sitting there just pissed. Our teacher watching him fail. We, we like. 200 yards away, but we could see the body language that it's not going good for my man. <laughs> We're like, damn, I don't think he's passing this shit. She comes over there and says, why y'all let him, uh, y'all knew he didn't know his shit. Why y'all let him come take this test? He got a fucking 12%. <laughs> she said, when he gets done, all of y'all are going to help him pass this fucking test. Or y'all don't get to move on. We was like, oh shit. You know, and it was like me and all my own, we all got like 90s and hundreds and shit. Like my guy Zach went after me, this motherfucker got a 99%. And so, but it was like in that afternoon, what we do for two, three hours with this man. We sat out there in that fucking lot and worked with him. So he could pass this fucking pre-trip test. Collective win. And they would tell yeah. us, yo, if he don't pass it, y'all can't go on to the next thing. It was just, we were like, whoa, wait a minute. Why, is, why do we got to get held back? Because he didn't know the shit. We was all out there studying together. Where does that at in the music industry? <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> sure, sometimes it feels like helping people hold you back. Come on, say it again, man. <laughs> say it again. I mean, that's, but that's, that's, how they, that's how they show us, too. Like, yeah. when you help somebody, a lot of times you move slower. It holds you back. You can't get your shine. You know, yeah. this is why groups break up. Yeah. This is why groups break up because one motherfucker trying to get their shine or that dude is one of the most talented in the group. And, you know, there's jealousy. So motherfuckers don't want to follow. They don't want to fall under somebody else and just be, you know, it's a it's a win. If he wins, it's a win for the group. If we still a group. Yeah. Yeah. But some cats don't want to don't want to give up that shine. I want to give up that light. And sometimes it's the best way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah truck the truck has made me reevaluate a lot of things about the music industry that's one of them mm. i'm like man you you will have some crews who are on some you know we no man left behind shit like we all right. coming through here or nobody coming through here mm -hmm. but overall the music industry is is it's kind of built on this practice of like you're saying breaking up groups uh, mm -hmm. isolating the best members and making those who are the least popular feel unwanted or, you know, yep. or like they don't have a shot or like they don't matter because they're not the main guy. Right. You know, um, and what I've seen in truck, it's the opposite. It's like, yo, you, when I first got on, on the team, I drive for now, I kind of drive for now. My, my manager's like, okay, here's my number, but here's the numbers to three or four other drivers so that you can ask them questions you may have if you're uncomfortable asking me some stuff you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying because overall they look at it like everybody's success helps everybody right the safer you are the better we look 
Mm-hmm. You know, the more you know, the longer you out here, the less access you have. We all do well. We all mm-hmm. make more bread. The music industry don't really look at it like that, man. Yeah. And uh, it's just, there's no collective wins in the music industry. It's like you won by yourself. You failed by yourself. It's your fault. Yeah. Even on major labels, like there's no, like, because, I mean, you look at like Rockefeller, that's mm-hmm. really independent. You know, the, yep. the, the, the cash monies of the world, like those are really independent labels in the midst of the industry. But yep. you look at a Def Jam, you look at a, you know, J Records, like some of these big, they, they didn't care if everybody won. You know what I'm saying? They, they wanted everybody to win, but they didn't put in the work to make sure everybody won. Yep. You know, and you have, you had cats like, you know, cash money and stuff. They needed everybody to win in order for them to be solidified in the industry. So yeah. they put, you know, some of the best beats on certain albums that might not have been hit albums, but just to make sure that, you know, they made a mark. You know, Rhyme Sayers, Waitlist, you know, was our great examples. Def Jux, like all the our great yeah. examples of that collective win mentality because we had to. Yeah. We had no fucking choice. That was the only way we could even. <laughs> yeah, we <was laughs> that's the only way, yeah, that's the only way we could eat is if everybody was was making was making moves you know what i mean yeah yeah it's true man but yeah no collective win we'll do one more one more of these uh hold on that was number five make sure that was number five okay yeah we'll do number Number six. six okay number six reason why it's difficult to make it in the music industry is that what i like to refer to as the moving target of success Mm -hmm. music has this thing and art has this thing where what is dope today is not necessarily dope tomorrow. Come on. There's a cultural element of the shit. Cultural shifts, changes, and societal shifts impact art. Mm-hmm. How we view art, what's considered dope today, ain't considered dope tomorrow. What was considered corny yesterday, maybe being a fake gangster, is, could be accepted right now. Yep. People just look at it as acting and music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so this is a moving target. Yeah. You can make a record that sounds great today, but in two years from now, it could sound dated. Yeah. Based on how fast the culture has shifted. You can make a record that sounded like shit two years ago because no one understood what the fuck you were on. Mm-hmm. And in two years from now, it's thought to be genius. Right. It's a moving target. It's never, it's never at the same place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And as an artist, you're just aiming for that thing, hoping that you hit it. Mm-hmm. That's unique to music. Being a trucker is being a trucker is being a trucker. Mm-hmm. In 1975, 2022. <laughs> right. It's right. the same. Yeah, most trades are like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? An electrician in 1995 uh, is no different than an electrician in 2025. Yep. It's not a moving target. It's in the same place. Mm-hmm. They may make the target a little bigger. Yep. You know what I mean? But it ain't moving. It's like, oh, no, nah, it's easy to become an electrician. It's easier to become a fucking dr- truck driver. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's easier to get your age back. Music is like this. This is the target. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the only thing that changes with trades is technology. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But the steps are still the same. Yeah. It's, you it, know. it's just like whack-a-mole, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the moving target of success is different, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, as we referred to earlier, it's already that people have a higher standard of success. Mm-hmm. They feel like if you're going to be a successful artist, they want to see the cars, the chains, the, all of the fly, you know what I'm saying? Shit that come along with it. You can't be no blue collar uh, rapper like us. Right. You can't be no, you know, middle class, upper middle class hip hop artist. Uh, that's a failure to them. Mm-hmm. And when you couple that with the fact that just being successful, period, is the target is so hard to fucking hit and it's always moving. This is way different than any other industry, man. Yeah, it is. I mean, most art, most artistic industries are 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 yeah. like that. Yeah, 
because everything is trendy. You know, fucking fashion design. Yeah. For God's sakes, you know what I mean? Like actual artists that are painters or sculptors. Yeah. You know, having that one piece that actually sells for some money. You know how hard that is. Yes, you hit. <laughs> Now, you know what I mean? You do it twice. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Very difficult, man. You could you could be doing the same thing. And 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 here's another crazy dynamic to the moving target principles that you could be doing the same thing just as good as you were doing it 10 years ago and no one gives a fuck now. Mhm. Yep. They've moved on. Yep. They're over it. They'll say that you, you know, you you you're boring. You keep doing the same record. You know, where someone else could be doing the same record and getting praise for it because where they yep. started at ain't where they ended at. It's just yep. how people view it. But yeah, that's the moving target thing. And so, uh, yeah, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Where? Quick announcement. Over the last several years, we've been asked many times by the listeners of the show if we would ever open it up to the public for advertising. We've always been interested in this, but we never had the systems in place to make it work properly. I'm proud to announce that we are officially accepting advertising from the public on Super Duty Tough Work. Meaning, if you're a small business owner or an artist and you like to create more awareness about your product, service, or release on the Super Duty Tough Work podcast, we're now in a position to do that. For more information, Email us at superdutytoughwork at weightless.net. Again, that's superdutytoughwork at weightless.net. Email us there. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you would like to promote, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible to let you know if we think it's a good fit and what the next steps are. Thank you for your time. Back to the show. Super Duty tough work yeah blueprint the logic talking about why is it so difficult to make it in the music industry and uh we got two more points point number seven is the relevance factor this is something that older artists have a unique understanding of that younger artists do not yes when you're young in the game, I should say, you feel like you will always be at least as relevant, as popular as you are now. Mm -hmm. You don't think there will ever come a time when the press won't write about you. Mm -hmm. When something you put out won't get the collective buzz that it did at the beginning of your career. And you are in for a rude awakening, my friend. <laughs> you are sadly mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> There's this thing that, that hangs above every artist. Mm -hmm. You know, this gray cloud that could just burst at any moment. Mm -hmm. And it's called relevance. <laughs> 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 the relevance cloud is always there. And sometimes, although we don't want to admit it, we can make moves that kind of take us out of that lane. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real thing. Yeah. Being a successful artist is not just a function of being dope, of being technically on top of your craft. It's a function of being, of what you're doing, being accepted in the culture at that moment and people right. being excited about it. At right. that moment, enough to want to cover it. Some people craft their careers in a way to where they're going to milk whatever the current pulse of society is. Some people build their career where they can leave and come every five or seven years with one crazy album and they always stay where they're at. Mm hmm. You know, look, uh, a la D'Angelo, a la Sade, a la, yeah. you know what I mean? Certain artists, they ain't on no relevance. They always relevant. Yeah, all they got to do is drop. <laughs> <laughs> you D'Angelo, all you got to do is drop. That's it. It don't matter when you drop. It don't matter how long it's been mm -mm. between albums. Mm -mm. 
when you drop is when you drop and you're D'Angelo. No. That's all that matters. Oh, you've gained 100 pounds, D'Angelo. You no longer look like this fucking <laughs> Adonis super cut dude on your album cover. Now right. you go all fat and shit. Hey, what the music sound like, though? <laughs> <laughs> facts. Facts. You relevant, facts. buddy, because you make some of the coldest music ever. Right. No matter. Yeah. Yeah. The Black Messiah record. Yeah. One of the illest records ever. Yes. Yes. Shit is so good. It probably was good 10, 15 years in between albums. Exactly. <laughs> this man dropped the record in 1995 and shit. 1997. Mm-hmm. Didn't come back to fucking 2020, 2019. <laughs> he was gone he was Mm -hmm. gone it did not matter he he, don't even tour like that nope don't do a lot of interviews nope nothing (laughs) shot a the same way like when they hear they hear you better catch them (laughs) exactly i did get to see shot a live you know what i'm saying so so i have that you know feather in my cap but yo like it may never happen again May never happen again. She may never even be in the vicinity where I could see her like. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. It's so ill when artists can do that, though. Because, mm-hmm. like, they know. They know. Like, look, we not playing this relevant game. We not dropping no album every year just to stay in y'all's faces. Right. Like, we don't care about this re- relevance factor. Some of these press people make it even worse, you know, because they yeah. treat a lot of the older artists as if they've fallen off simply because they've gotten older without even looking at the art they're creating before making that assessment. You know, you can't falling off. Isn't just because you've gotten older falling Mm -hmm. off should be a function of the art you make. Yeah. If your art fell off, you fell off, but if you're just as good, if not better then you should always have a spot, you know? Yeah. But compare that to fucking an essential service. Right. Nobody cares if a fucking plumber ain't in your face. Is that number still there? Nobody care. You know what I'm saying? You ain't penalizing no plumber for being on the scene too long, man. You've been cleaning toilets too long, dog. You don't, uh uh-uh, man. I need a new plumber. Shoot, if anything, it helps. (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it's a great, you be like, how long y'all been in business? Oh, you got the job. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you've been in business 150 years, your company, a word. Come get this money. (laughs) Come get this work. (laughs) You talking to somebody, an artist like, oh, you've been rapping for 20 years. Nope. That's not the new yeah. hotness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me go take my money over there. Yeah. You know, the relevance thing plays, it plays a, a role in a lot of artists' careers. And it's unfortunate, but we have to see like that shit makes it so difficult for artists. Yeah. And sometimes artists lose themselves trying to stay relevant. Yes. You're trying to make music that don't sound nothing like music that you make, yeah. but you're trying to sound like these, you know, cats that are relevant now that are you know probably 10 15 years younger than you and you know you you know you don't got no business making no trap music come but, on man you know you trying to be relevant you yeah. know and, and fuck up your legacy in the process yeah yeah that has ruined a lot of good artists trying mm-hmm. to chase those trends and stay relevant instead of just doing what got them there and just just improve upon it over time you know add mm-hmm. on it improve upon it you ain't got to change to try to you know get the teenagers to buy your records when the majority of your fan base is, is, is adults and shit, you know? Right. But yeah, that makes it a lot harder. And that's something that you ain't even got to worry about. Like on the other side of that shit, it's like, man, I be thinking about this shit. Like nobody cares about how long I've been driving. They only care if the shit don't get there. Right. You know, am I mean? good at it or not? Yeah. Am I good or not? They don't give a fuck. They don't care. You know? Ah, <sighs> Last bullet point of the night. The last reason why it's more difficult to have a career in music is more competition. Everybody want to rap. Everybody want to sing. Everybody play an instrument. Everybody make beats. <laughs> you got a laptop. You got a studio. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of whack. It kind of fucks the whole game up. Yes. Very much so. Because there's no barrier of entry. Mm-hmm. See, everybody might want to make the money that truck drivers make, mm-hmm. but everybody ain't trying to go to truck driving school. Right. Four weeks, eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. Damn. You mean I can't work another job? And okay. Everybody trying to do the job. Right. Everybody want to rap, though. Yeah. 
<laughs> you say, oh, I got garage, man. I'm an artist now. Mm-hmm. As soon as I hit that download button, <laughs> I'm a rapper. Uh, yep. I'm a producer. I'm a producer. I got yep. Brody Loops. Yep. I got Ableton. I'm a producer now, dog. You know, you don't see that. It's, and it creates this thing where, like, yeah, there's so many people doing it that there's so many voices. There's so much noise that mm. because it's already harder to get your name out there. And then you got all these people in it who 20 years ago wouldn't have been in it. Right. 25 years ago, when I got, I got my first uh, sampler in December of 1996. Mm. I got my EPS, Sonic EPS. I put it on layaway starting in June of 96. It took me at layaway. Yeah, I did layaway for those of you. Some old school shit at the pawn shop. Mm. It was $800. I was a college senior. That was a lot of money in 96. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a piece of equipment that you, yeah. you know, you might or might not, you know, make your money back using, you know. Didn't come with no man. For a hobby. Or- yeah, no manual. Yeah, you know, and this was no no Google. You couldn't just Google the shit. You know what right. I mean? So it's like, yeah. But everybody who was doing beats like that, doing beats back then, had the exact same hurdle. Mm-hmm. You had to commit financially before you had an opportunity to make music to become that thing. Now there's so many more people, and it's so much more competition that it's harder to get your voice heard. Yeah. That doesn't exist. There will always be a, a shortage of electricians, plumbers, HVAC, tradesmen, carpenters, truck drivers. Mm-hmm. They not work. We not even competing with each other. Like I be talking right. to my dude on my account. I was like, yo man, I mean, my, man, I did fucking 2,700 this week, man. I wish I almost cracked three. I mean, I did like 2,500. It's like, none of us are thinking I could have got more if you didn't get that load. Right. It's all like, yo, there's enough miles for everybody. There's enough freight. There's too much freight out here. There's mm-hmm. too many miles out here and too few drivers. I ain't experienced that shit in rap since the 90s. <laughs> it's true. It's true because of that barrier. I mean, same with being a DJ. You had to buy fucking tables to yep. be a DJ and a mixer. Now you can buy a controller that costs you $100 you and area. you would DJ. Yep. Immediately. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it was a definite, you know, different, you know, rate of entry back then. Yeah. You know, everybody didn't have, you know, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars to buy tables or mm-hmm. an MPC or an SP or you know, like now, like I said, you got a laptop, you got a studio. Yeah, and it made people work together more because we couldn't afford all that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like we all chipped in. I think we got our our eight track or four track or something. We got it. It might have been the sixteen. The- the 16. The, the DBS yeah. 12 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. We had, yeah, we all kicked in like a couple hundred bucks for that joint. But we knew that none of us individually had the bread for it. <laughs> right, right, right. So we we were we were in a crew like, hey, every if everybody throws in this much, we can get this and we record anytime we want to on our own. Mm-hmm. Made us work together more, you know, and uh it increased our chances of success. Uh, but we had to do that then. Now it's so much easier to get everything that you don't really got to work with people like that. You can become yeah. an island of a music artist and then, you know, but then you got to deal with the competition because everybody's out there doing it now. Right. So that is it. That's it for this week. Um, you know, I hope y'all enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I'm going to read back these points about why making it in the music industry is so difficult. Number one, no apprenticeships. Number two, music is not essential. Number three, no definitive path to success. Number four, higher standard of success. Number five, no collective wins. Number six, moving target. Number seven, the relevance factor. Number eight, more competition. That's it for this week. See y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to Super Duty Tough Work. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Follow the podcast on SoundCloud. Peace. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex.
complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work, huh? <laughs>